Hi, good afternoon. Uh, it's Jackie here from Soulscribe Calligraphy and welcome to Irish Wedding Chat. And today we're talking to Joe Flood, who is a business coach. And um, Joe and I go back a little bit because she's from here in New Ross and she was one of the very first people to welcome me to this lovely little town. So without further ado, let's bring on Joe. Hey, Joe. Hi, Jackie. How are you? Thank you Hi. for having me. You're very welcome. Delighted you came along, actually. Did you uh, enjoy the Twitter chat yesterday? I certainly did. Oh, my goodness me. The Twitter chat, it was frantic stuff, but it was amazing. <laughs> and thank you so much. Oh, Lord. It flew. I cannot believe the speed. The time went just by in a flash. Amazing yeah. contributions from people and great interaction. And again, thanks for having me on there as well. But I loved it. Great. Excellent. Oh, I love that. That's brilliant, brilliant feedback. Before we start chatting, Joe, I'm going to pop off screen. And would you just um, briefly introduce yourself to anybody who doesn't know you? I will. Thank Excellent. you. Uh, okay, Jackie. Lovely. Well, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Joe Flood, and I'm a business growth coach. Um, I live here in the New Ross area. Uh, my previous background, I owned my own business for gosh, 17 years, uh, Creek and, it's now Creek and Wellness Retreat, so I'm very proud to have owned that in my past life. I have a lot of experience working with businesses. Um, I suppose one of the things that I have found over the years is that um, most people struggle with their time management, etc. So I've created um, a piece called How to Do More in Less Time and Increase Your Productivity by 30% in 21 Days. And um, if you want to work with me, go have a look at my website. It's called We Coach People, www.wecoachpeople.com. And yeah, sure, I'll be chatting to Jackie now and I'll tell you more. Excellent. That was a lovely introduction, Joe. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you're, you're really experienced in this stuff. I feel like a right amateur beside you. No, <laughs> come on. You're brilliant at this, Jackie. <laughs> oh, thanks, Joe. Thanks. For and, yeah, multi talented Jackie with her incredible business as well, the Soul Scribe. My goodness me. Oh, your work, God, your yeah, work is just. <laughs> <laughs> oh don't no 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 your work is absolutely like it's just flawless it's incredible oh, thanks joe thanks oh my god i'm You're getting welcome. all embarrassed, here. Oh, getting don't. All embarrassed here. and another <laughs> string to your bow now presenter on live facebook <laughs> yeah. for irish wedding chat it's brilliant yeah well we're, we're hoping that you know people are actually benefiting from our twitter chats and then our interviews after and your work, your particular chat was fantastic because you had so many tips and tricks. I found it really interactive yesterday. I mm. thought it was fantastic, mm. you know. Oh, and lots good. Of people, mm. Yeah, lots of people um, interacting. So I think you have a cup there with loads of little names in it, which we will do later. <laughs> da -da, da -da. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we will pick the name out of the cup yes, <laughs> yes. not the hat the cup <laughs> yeah the cup absolutely the cup <laughs> the cup <laughs> actually i might just tell a little story now the the, the reason we have the cup is because i have moved into a new office here in new Ross and literally in the last couple of days so you may notice it's a bit echoey and the reason for that is there's me a desk and there's definitely no clutter <laughs> it's very funny so hence the cup there's not a hat there's nothing there's nothing anyhow, no no, no. And it's great was, yeah and that was one of the topics that we actually spoke about yeah. yesterday was yeah. the like you know yeah yeah i just ran out of mine and got a new one no i'm joking <laughs> um i came because the internet which is so important for my business because i work a lot online with people and yeah. I literally had to up sticks and move since the pandemic hit us because I think obviously everyone's at home. People are working from home yeah. um, people are their children are at home and there's such a drain on the Internet. The coverage where I live was very poor. So I yeah. just decided to make a decision to remedy the problem. And I got an office in town for the moment. And possibly if that works out, I'll stay here. But it I'm delighted with the Internet. But we have to do something about the echoes. <laughs> we'll put up a we'll, we'll we'll make it a bit more cozy i'll pop down and visit you after yeah exactly <laughs> yeah we'll have a little planning sesh yeah, yeah. you're only yeah. like 10 minutes down the road from me it feels exactly really yeah it'd be lovely get some yeah, input yeah. and then we'll 
Yeah, perfect. Yeah, excellent. So um, let's just talk about decluttering for a second. I know we're having a little bit mm. about a, a giggle over it. I, I think it's really important to yeah. declutter. Well, for me anyway, because when I'm working on a project, you cannot see um, anything like, you know, it just gets messy. Mm. It's like when I cook, I'm like the Swedish cook, like, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> from the Muppets. So like mm. I have a tendency to declutter uh, or tidy up, as I call it. I wouldn't actually call it declutter, but tidy up yeah. after I do every project. But it is something, um, I had a recollection yesterday, uh, it is something that also helps to clear out the mind. Would I be right in saying okay. that? Absolutely, yeah. 100% right. I mean, if, if you are working in a whole heap of clutter, your creativity, your productivity, everything suffers. First yeah. of all, you can't find anything. I know people whose desks are right up here, piled up and then every single thing every task that they try and do they have to try and find the documentation they haven't a clue where anything is and they waste half their day messing around trying to find stuff and that's usually you find that that type of person the whole place is cluttered their home is cluttered everything is so i start there actually when i work with people particularly because i have found that i suppose in my experience so far it really comes back down to those kind of nine steps that i have in my program those are the building blocks for you to get moving because if you can't see the wood from the trees you don't know what you need okay. so that's the reason i suggest the clutter clearing is critical and then continue on with it as it's something you put in your diary it's not something that you do every three months or every six months it's every okay. single week you go and you have a little piece of time in your diary to just flick through stuff and it just is it's really amazing the mm -hmm. impact on the business at the end of the day and on, on your year at the end. Well. Yeah, totally. I'm just, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I, Ailish was on our chat yesterday with us, and she said, "I started this morning. Does anyone need any lampshade?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant! Oh, good girl. <laughs> Down to the charity shop there, Ailish. <laughs> it honestly, it makes such a difference. I actually myself very recently, last week. I got into the bedroom, my bedroom with clothes and stuff, and I just got rid of a whole ton of things myself. Yeah, and I would yeah. do that every couple of months with clothes and stuff like that. Yeah. And your bathroom, you know how you gather up loads of bits and pieces in yeah. little sample things and stuff like that. And the next thing you know, they're all just put into a little dish somewhere and they're not yeah. used. So yeah. even sometimes I think being conscious about taking stuff to bring home that you know you're not going to use. Yeah. There's yeah, a, it, yeah. so, so that's another part of the whole clutter thing. It's about yeah. a mindset. I don't really need, you know, we all take things that we don't need. Yeah. Or I don't know if you're ever at a festival and you're given a bag and there's a whole load of rubbish in that you don't really oh, want. So yeah. just refuse to say, no, thank you. Yeah. I would just say when I, when I moved in, when I moved in here and I was going through my studio, I thought my studio was like, I had no mess in it. But when I started going through stuff, there was, yeah. as you say, bags from various networking yeah. events yeah. and you know and, and and unopened they hadn't been opened like you yeah. know yeah <laughs> and i was going through yeah. them going oh <laughs> but yeah but you know it's just a habit again i know we're, we talked about habits as well but that's just a habit we i don't know people love to get stuff for nothing or free or there's some sort of mentality i have to have it because it's free but yeah. even at the net when we go to a networking event i think that there's a huge amount of information we come back with and i know i used to do this Mm -hmm. You just put it to the side on the desk and you don't actually utilize the information you have, contacts that you ought to be connecting with. There's a whole ton of stuff there. You know, if there's pens in it, take the pen, put it with your pens. Whatever you don't need, you get rid of then. You don't just yeah. leave it over here and do it in two months. So yeah. little things like that all become, yeah. Yeah. you know, big things really at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's another thing. I went through um, some business cards and some of these business cards I've had mm -hmm. for decades like you know yeah. and I think even like decluttering through that it's a you know even going through your business cards and your contacts you know mm -hmm. helps a lot as well well actually Jackie a very interesting story about going through your contacts and business cards and things and um, I did that myself there a couple of weeks ago and I found a business card and I was thinking gosh I wonder who's this that was I couldn't remember for a moment and yeah. then I remembered it, I bought a beautiful brooch from this woman at a fair in uh, Duncormack, you know, the uh, Banner Rathangan show. Okay. And I thought I had meant to contact her and I didn't. But anyway, I decided there and then I'm going to send her an email, but I didn't. I go and have a look 
at the Facebook page and she was just after closing her business a couple of days before. Wow. So I, I connected with her and she instantly replied. And I said, I'd really love to meet up for a coffee and a chat with her. Oh, she said, that would be just so lovely. Yeah. So that's yeah. something I have in the pipeline to talk to her because I have a feeling that she's closing the business, but she doesn't really want to close the business. There's something has yeah. come up and she may need some help with trying to wade her way through all of the issues as to why, because her products and her business is amazing. Yeah. But that's an example of making connections from the past. You know, it's worth shooting our email here and there. Yeah. And saying, hi, yeah. remember. Mm. Yeah, I've seen that. I, unfortunately, I've seen a lot of small businesses and micro businesses yeah. Uh, making the t decision to close the door and um, this is just going back on one of the questions and answers that we had yesterday um, mm. I'm I'm kind of curious to know whether this has more to do with self-limiting beliefs than it has to do with the pandemic we and, and the lockdown we've had to endure over the past few months what do you think I think that there's probably both involved, but there would certainly be businesses who are struggling to such an extent that perhaps were on the verge of closing before this. And this yeah. is the file and nail in the coffin. And yeah. I think it's really important to make decisions based on facts and exactly where you're at to be able to sit yeah. down and be very clear and be honest and truthful with yourself. Yeah. And this is where people like myself come in. I mean, if anyone is struggling out there and you need some help, pick up the phone and ring me. I mean, I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. I will help you if I can. I yeah. will be the ear for an hour if you want me to. And that's not trying to give you, you know, a business thing or any of that. Just pick up the phone. I would do that for anybody. And I do help people who need help. But I think it's, you know, there's certainly, it's double-edged, Jackie, really. It depends yeah. on um, what the business is. It's a, that's a big, a big question. But definitely some of them are very much related to pandemic. I mean, in the catering, Jesus and catering myself you know hospitality for 17 years and yeah, yeah. my heart goes out to the pubs that can't open but yet yeah. i can understand the issues related to them and um, the restaurants which capacity is reduced by half in some cases or more uh there's pluses in some cases because some restaurants were able to fill the tables twice in the one night the turnover time was much quicker and you know so there's it, it's advantageous for a couple of businesses i know but for others, it's not because the physical building didn't, um, you know, meet the requirements. It was just impossible. So there's a lot of factors as to why somebody's business, you know, can or cannot survive at the moment. Right, right. Yeah, there is. There is. It's just that my heart goes out to them. Like, I'm fairly lucky in, in mm. what I'm doing. Um, yeah. So, you know, um, but I'm also in the position where, um if i don't get some income soon i'm going to have to do something do you know that way yeah, uh, yeah and that's sort of still sort of because it because it came up yesterday and it's because and it's also come up a few times for me personally the self-limiting beliefs you know whether this stops you from moving forward you know say for i'm talking about myself and but i'm mm. also relating this to other uh, micro and small businesses you know where we're producing mm. stuff by hand so mm. everything that we produce is a one-off you know how do we sort of um grow when we only have a certain amount of productivity that we can actually do you know is this part of this uh you know is this something that maybe you could help me with or somebody like me totally i think one of the things i just completed last year i did um a postgrad in innovation and enterprise and some of the techniques that we found uh, through design thinking, for example, which is a way of sitting down and really looking at where you're at and wa walking yourself through the path of your operation and finding new ways of doing things and new ideas. And it's literally starting with nothing. So that is definitely something that I'm really excited to be able to help people with. Which is, yeah. and it's, I think your guest last week, Fanola, who I know very well, and I'm actually on one of our programs, uh, the Get Strategic program. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's all out there. It's about pivoting. She talked about pivoting your business. And this is yeah. exactly the time to be looking at that. And for some people, I mean, their businesses have quadrupled in this pandemic, depending on, you know, we, we, we just have to be creative. We really have to sit down, take the time to 
you know, discuss and work with somebody like myself, I will definitely, Jackie, sit down for an hour or two with you and we can kind of look at other alternatives or options or what, are what can you offer to people? And then where is your market? Because I think yeah. sometimes people think the market has to be in the local area or just in Ireland. I work with yeah. people in America. Right. I actually have probably more clients in the States than I have here. So right. it's about who you're reaching out and, you know, and that's certainly limiting beliefs or, you know, if you believe that that's all there is. So we expand into great, powerful, you know, fantastic belief systems that you, you know, the world is your oyster. Anything is possible. So, you know, yeah. you can be marketing to anywhere in the world. There's yeah. birthdays. You know, you can create amazing birthday gifts for people, I'm sure. Uh, I've been I've been lucky enough that my work has gone to Australia, yeah. Uh, yeah. America, you know, totally. so yeah, uh, I, mm. I am lucky that I do have work out there and uh, yeah, it's sitting yeah. in somebody's home across the other yeah, end of the world, like, you know, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. I had a question in my head now, it's just gone completely, <laughs> so I tell you what. Um, sure. Jackie, just one, one other thing. I know somebody yeah. mentioned last night something about unproductive habits, that sometimes that if you tackle them too much, that it can be stressful. I think there was a comment yeah. like that somewhere. Yeah. And I'd just like to clarify, I suppose, a little bit about unproductive habits that will say, for example, uh, things that I, I have probably, there's not one thing on that list of nine things, steps, how to get more done in less time that I haven't struggled with myself. And the reason okay. they're on that list is because I found when I figured out how to step around those, I increased my product productivity by a huge amount. And the unproductive habits can be little things like, um, and then this takes a chunk out of your time. So you go for your cup of coffee, so you take a break. And I know, I think it was Eilish or somebody said something about when they were working, they went to do the laundry, and then I'm doing That's this. Eilish, yeah. yeah. Eilish. And uh, yeah, I used to do that. Oh Lord, I could spend about an hour by the time I got the laundry on and got the coffee and the biscuit and shall ring me mother and blah de blah and an hour went by. So I know, guys, I know there isn't one thing that I have not tried to avoid doing work. And so, you know, loads of them. You know, I had to go out and stroke, stroke the cat, feed the cat hang out the washing. Oh, I heard the machine beeping. Oh, that yeah. must be the dishwasher. I wonder, is there any post? Try to walk down to the post box and I'll see. So, you yeah. know, so um, eliminating these little fiddly things like, um, you know, going for the coffee at 10 o'clock when you know that you need the break, it's supposed to be at 11. If you have your diary set up and you have your time structured, that's exactly the way you'll work for the day. But if you start running out for the break and this, so that's the kind of thing I was sort of talking about Right. in terms of un un unproductive kind of habits. List them down. We all know we do them, and we just don't want to be honest enough with true. ourselves about true, what we're doing. True, yeah? true, true. Hands up there, yeah, absolutely yeah. true. Or the, the, the other big one is the saying yes to no. That's the crack. Again, I really loved if somebody rang me and said, what about having a coffee? I mean, it would be on the day, and I'm busy. But I still yeah. went ahead. I thought, oh, feck it. Should I just go? Yeah. I'll only be an hour. Sure, it'll do me good. I need a break. I convinced myself yeah. I was after working so hard. So yeah. it's all of that. I think it's, a, it's all of that stuff, really. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ailish has left a comment there saying, I am the queen of procrastination. Yeah, I know. It, takes, it just takes, it, it, you know, there's, there's, there's actually, um, I brought this book in because I absolutely love this guy. And I said, I'll share one of my secrets. Uh, okay. This is the guy I sleep with at night in odd time. Can you see him? Jack Canfield. Oh, Jack Canfield, yeah. I love Jack. <laughs> yeah, he's and great. <laughs> he, he's the chicken soup from the soul guy. But also, he, um, he talks about the success principles here. And the very first thing he talks about is taking 100% responsibility. And when you say that to people, they think, Oh, they almost feel it's sort of an affront to dare say to somebody how, you know, you need to take 100% responsibility. But I think yeah. it's a great, it, it, it's like if you're getting married, you know, you don't sort of give a, 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 about 85% responsibility for this. You know, it no. might work out. No, we give it 100%. So yeah. I think taking 100% responsibility means really being honest about where you're at right now in your life. And even if that involves 
let's say I had a situation myself where we had a bereavement that was uh, very personal to and um, impactful on all of us. Yeah. And there are times like that when it's okay to just not be able to do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And that's taken hundred percent responsibility. And that's saying I am actually not able to do any of this stuff yeah. today yeah. or tomorrow or the next day until I am able but yeah. understanding that that's a process of, you know, it was grief, it was all of these things, and it just took time to get through. So yeah. and I think it's, it's also... Mm, yeah. I think it's also important not to punish yourself because I think no. we end up end punishing ourselves for yeah. feeling like that or even sitting, you know, as part of the process mm. of acceptance, maybe it's that guilt, yeah. You know, yeah. it's that guilt, yeah. you know, you yeah. shouldn't be feeling like that. You know, it's not right. Yeah. You know, you get up. You have to do this. You have to do yeah. that. So, exactly. yeah. yeah. And it's so. about also understanding that a point comes where you do have to start making an effort yeah. and finding ways to move forward. And it's a kind of like that with life in general, I think, and your business. You have yeah. to make a decision about where you're going. So yeah. I think when to go back to my nine steps for one second, the reason that they're there is because they are the building blocks. Then we get into what you really want. So what is your goal? Why are you doing this business? Yeah. Are you yeah. doing it as a hobby? Is it really a business? Why did you start it? All yeah. of these things. And then we get down to the crux of the matter and then we find, okay, so how are we going to do this? Or you're going to be happy doing what you can do. How many hours can you give every week? Yeah. Are you working for 20 hours when you should be doing 30 hours? or you're doing 30 hours and you really haven't got time for the 30 years or 20. It's about sitting down and figuring it all out and then putting yeah. some strategies in place and off you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, everything you're saying. I'm just nodding my head because I'm in uh, uh, absolute agreement with you. Oh, thank you. I, what I'd like um, people to know, because uh, I know a little bit more, uh, a little bit of your backstory there. Well, I'd like um, you to share if it's okay with you is to your, your journey to becoming a coach okay um okay so um i have two kids uh twins who will be 21 this november and back in the day when i had my absolutely beautiful creek and hotel which lots of local people will remember and um, i made a conscious decision to sell my business because i felt i wasn't able to give what i needed to give to my family and particularly as one of my children uh, was diagnosed with issues which led to a learning, uh, I suppose, difference. And I made the decision to um, give up my business, which was a huge uh, step, really, which, and one I wasn't prepared for, and one that I really tripped up over for a few years afterwards. So I threw myself into being a full-time mother, you know, all of this sort of thing. And I also didn't really enjoy it very much for the couple for, for a year or two because I just I, I don't know I was all over the place. So I started working on self development programs. I did coaching programs. I did a degree in college. Oh, I I don't know all kinds of things. But eventually, um, I found that the answer lies within yourself. Really, you have to kind of find uh, who you are and what you really love doing. And I suppose through all of these different courses and programs and you know, whatever, it's led me to where I am today. And yeah. um, I absolutely, again, I just love my job. I love what I do. I adore seeing somebody starting in a very stressed state and finishing up, you know, happy, excited, delighted, making money, having a family life, having a balance, really. Mm. Yeah, that's important. That's important a yeah. lot. So that brings us on nicely, I think, to picking a name. Okay. And who has the chance of oh. working with you on your powerhouse coaching session? Go on, pick the name, pick the name. Who is it? Who is it? Is it? I don't know how to say the first seaside jewelry. Ailish, is it Ailish? Oh, Ailish, yay. Yeah. Oh, hey. oh, hey. Yay, yay, yay. Woohoo. Lovely. You have Finish. one. Well done. Lovely, lovely. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, oh, really. yeah. That'll be lovely. End of it? procrastination, Ailish. That's there you it. Go, Ailish. <laughs> Ailish, who was cleaning out stuff earlier with lampshades. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have a look at the lampshades, Ailish. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Thanks so much, Joe, for making some oh. time for us. Uh, I really enjoyed having you on. And I'll pop down now in about half an hour and have a cup of coffee with you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank Excellent. You. Thanks so much, Joe. And thanks everybody for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want mm. to contact Joe, you can visit her website. I'll just pop it up and so you can see it. So visit her website, wecoachpeople.com and connect with her on social media. So we will see you all again soon. So bye for now. Thank you. Bye.